Hi, this is Phil Cook, and on today's episode, I'm going to be talking about the two levels it takes for you to succeed. Sometimes we often think that just if I can be good at this one thing, if I can be amazing at this, if this door will open, I can be a success. But there are actually two levels that we need to achieve to be totally successful. Stay tuned. I've often said that one of my greatest regrets in my career is that I did not start early enough learning about the business of making films and television programs. Uh, we forget sometimes that it's called the movie business. On my podcast, I recently interviewed Howard Kazanjian, and I would encourage you to go get that episode and listen to it. Howard is a legend, produced Star Wars movies, Raider the Lo Raiders of the Lost Ark, worked with people like Hitchcock, Sam Peckinpah, just an incredible guy, and a brilliant, brilliant producer. And uh, one of the things he said was, business was so important for him. In fact, he said he was more of a businessman than he was a creative person. And he said certainly he could be creative, he could have fun on the set, but he understood the importance of business. So here's the word I want to share with you today, and that's, you know, it really takes two levels to be successful at your career. One is the level of creative art that you've achieved. You may be a writer, a set designer, makeup artist, a musician, uh, whatever you are, a camera operator, director, producer, whatever it is, is you need to, number one, be amazing at that. You need to understand that. And if you've listened to me much or listened to this podcast or read my books, you understand I'm a real advocate of excellence. I've often said Jesus didn't make Christian furniture. He made good furniture. You know, we never want to settle because we're, we're, we're producing something for a niche audience. I have so many people that come to me and say, well, Phil, it's a, it's a Christian movie, so it doesn't have to be Hollywood standard. Or, you know, it's a church play we're doing, so it doesn't have to be like Broadway. Well, you know what? We need to raise the bar, and we need to think higher when it comes to our own excellence and our own skill level. So, number one, we have to be really good at what we do. I, 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 tell, I told someone the other day that, you know, actors, it, they were an actor and they were asking about their career. And I said, you know, remember the actors in your high school drama program? Well, a few of them, maybe one from a high school, will actually graduate and go on and be able to do it at college. He'll have, he or she will have enough talent that they can act at a college drama level. Then when that, their career in college is over, most of those will wash out. But maybe one or two in that group will be good enough to go to New York or go to L.A. or go to somewhere where they can actually compete professionally at a much higher level. It's hard, and you have to be really good. L.A., you know, when you come to Hollywood, it's like the all-star team of all-star teams. It's really remarkable how many people... Um, how many people are here that just are really quite amazing? The competition is stunning. So that should go without saying, number one, being really, really good at what you do. The second level of success we have to achieve is the business level. We have to understand the administration. If you're in the nonprofit world, how donor relationships work. Because if you can't get the money to do your project, if you can't network with people who can make it happen, you're never going to achieve anyone. You know, um, it's interesting. An artist can't just paint. He's got to figure out how how to sell his or her work. Uh, unless, he, if, if you just want to sit on the back porch and do watercolors, that's great. But if you want to sell your work, you've got to know how that world works. A musician uh, can certainly be the best musician in the world, but if they don't know how to actually make a living from it, I know our daughter Bailey is a musician. She lives in Brooklyn. She's remarkable. And she's always talking to me about the industry and Spotify and how that's impacted her ability to sell albums and CDs and the good, the bad, the ugly, uh, what, what she, when, when she does shows, how she can make, you know, a profit from that. We're always talking about the business aspect of it. And it's so important. I know for her as a musician, it's not just about being a great musician. It's about figuring out the business aspect of doing it it is just as well. Um, you know, the Salvation Army, my wife Kathleen and I are on different boards of the Salvation Army. She's on their national board, and I'm on the Western Regional Board here in California. And um, we've talked very, so often about these are powerful, anointed, brilliant ministry leaders out there. But they also have to understand the art of raising money. They have to understand corporate relationships. They have to build government relationships. There's so many things they have to do from an operational, administrative level to make the incredible work they do go. So I, I wrote down a list of things that just reminded me of this the other day that, you know, Van, uh, Michelangelo, the great artist, Michelangelo, Angelo, never stopped worrying about funding. 
He argued with the Pope constantly about money while painting the Sistine Chapel. Historians now consider that one of the most creative works of all time, and yet he was constantly, constantly dogged by finances to make his projects happen. Uh, Vincent van Gogh never found proper funding, and partly as a result committed suicide. Certainly he had other issues. And his brother was his primary financial supporter. His brother was an art dealer who would try to sell Van Gogh's work and would send him money. But Van Gogh struggled and struggled and was never recognized for his genius until after his death. He never really found a way to bridge from his art to his audience. And that resulted in a miserable life, even though he was one of the most talented artists of all time. Orson Welles directed the classic movie Citizen King, considered by many people, including me, to possibly be the greatest movie of all time. But he never really went far beyond that success. He left a trail of half-finished, poorly edited projects because he could never deal with the creative business of making a movie. And trust me, that business is just as creative as writing, producing, directing. The business part, it, for some of us, it's a nightmare. You know, I get the shakes when I'm reading a spreadsheet. Excel just makes me nervous. But the truth is, that kind of business really matters. So the bottom line to all this lesson is, having all the talent in the world will matter very little if you don't understand that second level of success, which is essentially, how to do the business, how to do the administration, how to make that part of it happen. How to find an audience is absolutely critical. So from now on, think two levels in your art, in your business, whether you're in the movie business or real estate or whatever it is you do, it's not just about talent. It's also about having the business sense and the understanding to make that talent get out there and find an audience. That's the lesson for today, and it's very, very important. So I would encourage you, stick with us, share this with people. If you know somebody struggling, a young filmmaker who's struggling, or an old filmmaker who's struggling, or somebody who's struggling in any business, and they need to hear this lesson, get in this podcast, send it to them. And if you don't have my book yet, Ideas on a Deadline, I encourage you to do it. Um, or go to our website at influencelab.com. That's our nonprofit. And, you know, we just got back from doing training and teaching sessions in Brazil. Uh, then we went to India for 10 days, teaching professional Christians in the industry how to use media to share the gospel more effectively. And I, I'd encourage you to go to influencelab.com and donate. So thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And uh, tune in next week because we've got a great podcast coming up. 